Good afternoon. I'm Caitlin Matson, and this is the Green Room on the Classical Cafe. I'm joined today by Don Reinhold, who is the CEO of the Wichita Symphony Orchestra, and Samantha Davis Shade, the Operations Manager. They're going to give us a little insight to behind the scenes at the Symphony Orchestra and the concerts they are currently getting ready for. Uh, the most recent uh, being on Friday evening, Nafsker Park. And then after that, playing uh, at Botanica, and of course, Kristen Chenoweth. So we have a lot of ground to cover. Welcome to the both of you. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And you should always be careful about saying behind the scenes, because my behind the scene is a mess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we'll show people. But we'll put we'll put this up on, on our Facebook page. And people can get see. get a lot of hits now to see what's going great. on. I see the chaos inside the genius lines news. of the symphony. <laughs> Don, would you please tell us about this kind of resurgence we've seen recently, especially during the pandemic, ever since the pandemic happened, kind of a resurgence of these beautiful outdoor concerts. And um, suddenly we've had more than I, in recent memory with the symphony, so lovely. And also your partnership with Botanica um, and the symphony playing now fairly regularly there. Yeah. Well, it's really very interesting because to my memory, and my, you know, I've only been here 10 and a half years, but I don't know that the symphony ever I maybe hesitate to say ever, but they haven't been known for doing outdoor concerts. We've always been inside Century 2, with the one exception being the Riverfest Twilight Pops, which is out on the square. But we've never done a lot of stuff outdoors. But when the pandemic hit, we really had to refocus and reinvent, reinvent stuff because if we, we were going to go dark otherwise so we had to create some opportunities for our musicians to perform outside so we started a relationship with Wichita Park and Rec to take us out into neighborhood parks and one element of that utilizes their brand new relatively brand new uh, venue right down the street from us at uh, Nasker Park which a lot of people will remember as being sort of a quasi Victorian hangout uh, for various folks. Uh, but now it's a sort of grand lawn uh, that opens up with the night stage, which allows us to do small ensembles. Like for instance, this Friday night at 6.30, the brass quintet is doing a concert with the percussion ensemble. And I might ask Samantha to tell us a little bit more about that program because she's been more involved with it, but this is a chance for people just to come downtown, uh, sit outside at a time of night when it's starting to cool off a little bit. Um, I've been noticing around 6.30 at night, it's starting to dip into the comfortable 80s. So it's going to be a great concert, great time to <laughs> bring the family. Samantha, uh, Nafsker, this Friday at 6.30. Tell us a bit more, more about what we, we will hear. So we're really excited to feature our brass quintet again. They're kind of our ride or dies from the orchestra as brass players are known to be able to do outside things a little easier and more maneuverably. Um, so they'll have a nice little program, a um, couple of different selections of things that we've heard before, maybe something you haven't, just really nice, easy listening, a fun little program. Um, and they're going to end the concert. We'll start with our percussion ensemble. We actually were hoping to feature them at one of our um early pandemic concerts, one of our smaller ones, and I think in October of 2020 or November, we were unable to feature them. So we're so excited. It's going to be um, removing four marimba and a vibraphone. So I don't know exactly what they're <laughs> going to be doing for us. I, I have the program. I've never heard it. I'm not a percussionist, but lots of percussion equipment, lots of mallets and stuff. We're just really excited to give them a chance to be featured. We hardly, they're always at the back yes. of the stage and they're never featured. So this is a great opportunity for that. We're excited. And it's so theatrical to watch them perform. It's a like, lot of, it's uh, almost interpretive dance. A yes, little bit. it's like this multi-sensory yes. experience where it's so much more than what you're hearing with a percussion ensemble. That's so much fun. And I had to laugh because you were talking about your brass quintet being your ride or die because they're so mobile. But here you have what four marimbas you have to look over to now. Yeah, this is not park. quite as um, simple and seamless. We've got some help. Um, well, you know, I... 
you never knew that U-Haul would be part of the job description, but here we go. We're going to rent some U-Hauls and we're going to slap some percussion for everyone, but we're really excited. Mm -hmm. We're going to have um, event systems come out. They've helped us with all of our sound and tech. So we'll have some lights and sound to kind of amplify that in case we have any drag races going on behind us on Douglas. <laughs> great. So that would be a great way um, to hear that. We're so excited to, to be able to present that for everyone. This Friday evening at 630, Nafsker Park, free, open to the public. Dawn, and then after that, your symphony on the Grand Lawn um, with Botanica Gardens. Um, this is, gorgeous. This is an amazing event. I mean, I think a lot of people have experienced our symphony in the gardens, which takes place in May. Uh, this is kind of a, just a concert. It's, it's not a food and beverage type of event the way the spring event is. Uh, but this gives the orchestra a little bit more time to just play as an orchestra. Uh, without the garden ensembles that we feature in the spring. So this is the first time we've done a fall event. And this whole thing with Botanica, I mean, Marty Miller, the, the CEO of um, Botanica and I were talking about this shortly after my arrival. And it was always Marty's ambition to convert what I call the back lot, uh, which was an overgrown weed lot at the time, into uh, this grand lawn. This was back 10 years ago, there was still no carousel and there was no lawn. Um, it was just a dump, basically. Uh, but the transformation has been magnificent. And I think it's Wichita is very lucky, very proud of what's happened there. And it's given us an opportunity for a real outdoor venue because you have the slope lawn. It's beautiful backdrop. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful stage. And the beauty of it is that we can actually build the stage out with risers so that we can fit the entire 60 piece orchestra on on the platform so this concert is september 30th it's at 7 30. tickets are 45 dollars we do have some student tickets at ten dollars and the concert is basically the first half will feature music that Let's say it's music about botanical surroundings. Yes, we're gonna actually so, going to listen to one of the pieces right now and then come back awesome. and finish the discussion about um, Symphony on the Grand Lawn. Okay, let's One do of that. the very fitting pieces programmed is Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakoff's Flight of the Bumblebee. We'll be back with Don Reinhold and Samantha Davis-Shade from the Wichita Symphony Orchestra. This is The Green Room. I'm Caitlin Matson, joined by Don Reinhold, CEO of the Wichita Symphony Orchestra, and Samantha Davis-Shade, their operations manager. WichitaSymphony.org, WichitaSymphony.org, the website to go to for tickets for Symphony on the Grand Lawn at Botanica or Kristen Chenoweth, or the beginning of their Masterwork series, all of that coming up in the next several weeks. We were talking about Symphony on the Grand Lawn, which is scheduled September the 30th, which is a Friday, beginning at 7.30. Samantha, what are some more details that we should know about uh, attending this concert? Yeah, so gates are going to open at 6.30 p.m. So it's a little different than our normal um, start time that you might see. So you get there, you have time to maneuver around the lawns. We're going to have bars, cash bars set up and every ticket gets you a chair automatically. So no need to worry about bringing anything to sit on or picnic blankets. We'll have that for you so you can get there and get your chair set up, um, find your good spot on the lawn, wherever you prefer. Um, so again, the cash bars will be available and I believe Botanica is going to have some cookies and popcorn, some light snacks. So you might want to grab dinner before you head out, um, before you get to Botanica, but otherwise it should be a really wonderful evening concert should be around an hour and a half, maybe two with an intermission kind of run just like you'd see inside. We're really excited. Tickets are only $45. We've tried to make this a little bit more inclusive, including some limited student tickets for $10. So we'd love to see as many friends and family come out um, and enjoy this really wonderful evening um, under the stars. It sounds magical. One more time for tickets, wichitasymphony.org or call 316-267-7658. That is the Wichita Symphony Orchestra box office. CEO Don Reinhold has been with the symphony now for over a decade um, and has seen them through a pandemic and um, entering into a new season um, where everything changed over the past couple years and everybody's looking ahead. 
and kind of reimagining what it means to have an experience at the symphony. And over the years, you have incorporated such innovative techniques to help keep an audience, gain new audiences, whether it's projected visuals above the symphony orchestra, whether it's having an aerial artist at the concert with you. As you look to the future of the Wichita Symphony, especially post-pandemic, what is on your mind? Well, I think a lot of it involves um, having the artistic excellence that we've always had that people are accustomed to. We have a first-rate orchestra, um, as fine as an orchestra as any regional orchestra in the country. Yes. Uh, we bring in fabulous soloists, um, and sometimes it's our own musicians that are principals, Holly Mulcahy or this November, David Hunsaker. But the other thing that we do from time to time is we bring in the superstar. And we've done this in the past with Michael Feinstein. We even did it with Bugs Bunny one year. Um, but this year, we really start the big celebration of a returning to, let's say, some kind of degree of normalcy uh, with Kristen Chenoweth. Now, this actually goes back before the pandemic, because we were going to do her, uh, she was going to come in the spring of 2020, and then uh, COVID happened, and everything shut down. We rescheduled it, uh, but a second concert also got canceled. And so now the third time's charm, we mm -hmm. hope. Uh, and she's going to be here in Wichita on October 8th. That's a Saturday night concert at 7.30. She is, I think most people in Wichita know that she is one of the biggest stars out there. Uh, she began her career many years ago as a uh, one of the cast members of uh, music theater Wichita summer season, where they put their you know the local area students on stage. Um, so she's been to Wichita, but it's been many years. Uh, so she's gone on to movies, television, you name it, Broadway. And so she's coming and singing music from her most recent album called For the Girls, which features you know music that inspired her. Um, by all her heroes, and um, this is going to—it's going to be very big. It's one of the biggest, most expensive concerts I've ever produced. So we're really looking forward to this, and it's, a, it's a definitely what we would call a hot ticket. Um, yes, it is. Speaking of, get them sooner rather than later. It's definitely the sort of concert which everybody would. But even people who have never been to the symphony are going to go. Oh. I think I need to go see Kristen Chenoweth. Well, that's what we're seeing. It's it's a great concert to bring in new people, to introduce them not only to the Wichita Symphony, but even to Century too. And we expect that people will travel in from Oklahoma, where yeah. she's from. Where she went to school, and, yeah. Uh, there'll be a market and it's it's it will extend beyond our typical fifty degree fifty mile radius. Um, and you know. The tickets are on sale. We have good seats left. Um, they start now at $85 and they go on up to 185 I think these are almost New York prices. Um, we realize that, or just still less than New York, but uh, it should be an evening that people will remember and uh, very exciting. We have a special VIP opportunity to meet her afterwards. And that is for $500. And that includes a donation to the Wichita Symphony to support the work that we do in the community. The Wichita Symphony Orchestra presents Kristen Chenoweth for the Girls on October the 8th at 7.30 in Century 2 Concert Hall. Get tickets at wichitasymphony.org or by calling their box office at 316-267-7658. Tickets are on sale for their entire season including Symphony on the Grand Lawn, which is September the 30th. Don't forget the free community concert at Nafsker Park this coming Friday, beginning at 6.30. Is that correct at that time? Yes. Um, gosh, you're busy. And then you have your very first Masterworks concert before the month of October is, is, is through. Yeah, a, lot of exciting things to look, a lot of exciting things to look forward to with the symphony. 
Thank you both for joining me today for talking about what's coming up and it's exciting. It's an exciting time. Have the greatest time moving those marimbas with oh, a yeah. Samantha. She's the <laughs> operations manager. So that's her glamorous life. It's so glamorous. <laughs> Thank you both so much and have, have a great Thank start. You to your season. Oh, anytime. Yeah. We'll see you again soon. Bye.